And so I'll show you a little bit of information about that in just a minute. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin. Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to Engineering 222. Um, as I mentioned in the email that I sent yesterday, uh, I'd be really grateful if you switch on your webcams. It makes it a lot less awkward for me to teach if I can see student faces out as I'm doing that. And in addition to that, we're going to use breakout rooms occasionally this semester. And so you'll be put into smaller groups where you'll interact with your uh, classmates and work through some of the example problems that we have for the semester. Well, let's begin with a couple of announcements. And so uh, each class meeting, I'll begin with an announcement slide, just in my hopes that it will help to keep you on track and aware of the uh, expectations that you have for the semester. Um, now, I'll show you in just a moment that you can get the uh, lecture notes and the in-class exercises. They're already available as PDF files on Blackboard, so I'll show you where you can get those. I suggest that you put those materials, print them out, and put them in a three-ring binder. Because if they're printed out, that'll help you to take your own handwritten notes uh, on top of or to the side of the presentation slides that I'll be sharing with you. And these in-class exercises, it's it's absolutely critical. It's not optional. They have to be printed out. Uh, there's a lot of work that you're going to be doing that will help you to be more informed and more comfortable and capable when you get to the homework. I don't want to ever just teach you some concepts in abstract and then turn you loose on an assignment that you don't understand or you don't feel prepared to work on. Uh, I have a gradual approach where we'll solve some simple problems together during the lecture. The homework uh, assignments are a little bit more complex, and the intention of those homework assignments is to prepare you for the questions that you might face on the exam. So the beginning part of that is the in-class exercises. So please uh, print those out. The syllabus mentions what the textbook is, and also that's available uh, through the information on the Marshall Bookstore website. I'll show you a little more details about that book. If you haven't already purchased it or arranged to rent it for the semester, then please do that as soon as you can. Uh, the other thing is that the, uh, the first homework assignment is um, homework zero, and it's numbered homework zero because it's optional. It's just a, a bonus assignment. And um, if you complete that before 5 o'clock on Friday and upload it to Blackboard, then you'll get up to 10 homework bonus points. And I don't give a lot of bonus points through the semester, so this is kind of a rare opportunity. I'd encourage you to take advantage of that. The first real assignment, homework one, is going to be due on Friday the 29th. And what you should do is upload a single black and white PDF file to Blackboard before the deadline. Uh, that assignment on Friday the 29th will be due right at 12. It's due before our class begins. Um, and the way that you can create a PDF file, there's many of options. You could use a flatbed scanner or sometimes there are copy machines that can batch feed a stack of papers and turn it into a PDF. But these days what most people are doing is they're using applications on their mobile phone. Uh, my favorite is Cam Scanner. There's also an Adobe um, app called Adobe Scan where you just take pictures of your homework and then it'll convert it to a PDF file. Please make sure that those PDF files are in black and white. So Cam Scanner gives you the black and white option. If you're using Adobe Scan, what you want to use is it's called the whiteboard option. And what that does is it enhances the contrast of the image to make it more clear. OK, so those are the announcements. Uh, we're going to be talking about interest rates and rates of return today. We actually will get into the material itself after we spend a little bit of time going through the syllabus and me showing you some other uh, features related to the course. So before we get into anything else, are there questions so far? Uh, the question about the, uh, the book. Do you need the book to do the homework this Friday? No. So homework zero, the assignments that's due two days from today. Homework zero is just, it's kind of where you tell me about yourself. And so you don't need the book to uh, solve that. By the way, feel free to, uh, to use your microphone if you have questions. Sometimes the uh, text chat's not a great way to ask questions because you'll type and I've moved on. Or maybe I don't hear the very faint alert sound when you type a text. So feel free to unmute and go ahead and ask your questions. 
are, are there any other questions related to the slide that's here up on the screen? Okay, well, let's look at a couple of other things that I'd like you to be aware of. Let me show you what our course web page looks like. So here we are on Blackboard. It's a nice snowy day. Engineering 222 is our course. And uh, so I guess <laughs> you found that because here you are in Collaborate Ultra. But what you may not have noticed already is that the syllabus and schedule are posted as PDF files there. And so a lot of this syllabus is just kind of the boilerplate language the university requires us to put into the syllabus. I'd encourage you to go through it in entirety. A couple of key things that I want to point out is my office hour timing. And so uh, you can call me on Teams or by telephone for my office hours. Friday from 11 to 12, so that's before our class, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, before class, and then from 2 to 3 p.m on those same days. And if you need to get in touch with me outside of my office hours, you can feel free to try calling on Teams. And if I'm not in another meeting or out of my office or busy, then I'll definitely pick up. I'd be glad to hear from you. So feel free to call me on the phone, send me an email, call me on Teams. There's lots of ways to get in touch. Uh, here is the textbook that's in the syllabus, Engineering Economy, 8th edition. Um, You'll notice that the syllabus mentions that you must have access to a computer, webcam, and microphone. And so it's a matter of course policy that you need to have access to a webcam and microphone. And another thing that I mentioned related to webcam and microphone later on in the syllabus is that there are going to be three occasions during the semester where I check to see if students have their webcams enabled. And if you do, then you'll get um, some additional bonus points. So the four bonus points opportunities through the semester are the assignment that's due on Friday and then those uh, webcam checks. Okay, um, our course objectives and outcomes are all related to uh, finances and how money is used to accomplish engineering projects, computer science projects, basically the ways in which resources are applied to problem solving. And so those specific objectives and outcomes are summarized in this learner outcome table where we identify for each outcome how you'll practice it and where that's going to be assessed later in the semester. Um, a lot of people are curious about the grading scale. And so 20% of the grade comes from assignments. The two exams are each worth 20%. The final is worth 25%, and then we have a pretty substantial course project that's worth 15% of the grade. Here I mentioned that the attendance and webcam check will be done at three random occasions through the semester, and that if you're in class and have your webcam enabled that day, you'll get 10 bonus homework assignment points. Um, I have a pretty strict policy related to late work. I don't accept it. If your work isn't submitted uh, by the deadline, then it can't be submitted unless you have an official university excused absence. And those aren't easy to get. So turn your homework in on time. Uh, otherwise, you know, I re realize that sometimes things slip through the cracks or maybe you're just not feeling up to it. I do drop the two lowest homework assignment scores of the semester. And so that's kind of the way that I achieve what I feel is equilibrium, is I'm really strict on the submission deadlines for a variety of reasons. It's not convenient or even possible to accept late work when you use Blackboard for homework. Um, so I'm strict on the deadlines, but I do drop the two lowest grades, including if you get a zero because you forgot assignment or something like that. So don't even ask to submit late homework unless you have a university excused absence. Um, the academic integrity expectations for the course is that anything you submit for grading needs to be your work. So whether that's homework assignments or exams or the project, if you're turning it in for points, it needs to be what you did. Not what you figured out with somebody else, it needs to be what you did. And so it's okay to talk about the homework assignment with other students and it's okay to check your answers just to make sure that everybody ended up in the same place. 
And even if your friend or classmate uh, has a mistake, it's okay to help them find what the mistake is, but don't show them your paper and allow them to copy your work. Or don't tell them what to do and then rob them of that learning opportunity. Because the only way you get stronger as a student is through the intellectual struggle. Uh, the same way with uh, physical muscles, it also applies to mental muscles. If you want to gain proficiency and ability, you want to be ready to do well on the exams, you have to put in the effort on the assignments. And so I really encourage collaboration, especially like with these in-class exercises that we're going to be working together during the lecture, but I discourage cheating. And if I find cheating, then uh, there's going to be severe penalties that are greater than the value of the assignment in question. So for example, if I find two students have copied off of each other for a homework assignment, you're going to get lower than a zero for that homework assignment. I'll actually give you minus points so that it takes points away from another assignment. And the rationale with that is that there has to be a, a bigger penalty than the incentive for cheating. You know, if you're going to get a zero anyway, uh, maybe you'd be tempted to cheat if there wasn't a, a stronger penalty than the zero. So uh, in the case of exams, <coughs> if I uh, detect inappropriate collaboration on the exams, then you'd get a grade of zero on the exam and you'd be reported to uh, academic affairs for cheating in the course. And so it's really um, important that you understand and follow these expectations related to academic integrity because we here at Marshall are really eager for you to learn the material and be ready for your career and do a good job when you graduate and, and are starting to work. And the only way that you can be prepared for that career is if you get strong while you're in school by doing your own work. Okay, there's a long list of university policies that I encourage you to uh, review. I'm sure that maybe you're aware of some of them, but uh, each of them can be found on the Academic Affairs website and the address is given to you there. Um, if you're not in the habit of checking your Marshall email, you need to get into the habit. And if you want, you can have it forward to a different email account, but I send out announcements uh, to your Marshall email address and if you need to get in touch with me, you should send me a message through your Marshall email address. They ask us not to uh, uh, communicate with students outside of their Marshall email address just because it's tough to, uh, to know exactly the identity of the person that you're communicating with if it's not the Marshall address. Okay, finally, let me zoom in a bit here to show you uh, this schedule. This course schedule is maybe the single most important thing that I'm showing you today. This is a summary at a glance of our entire semester. And this is showing um, the subject of each class meeting. It shows what textbook chapter goes along with it. And so, you know, the point of buying the book is that you should be reading it. And uh, the best way to read it, I believe, is to skim through the textbook before the lecture and then after the lecture read it in detail just so that you get like my point of view on the material and then the textbook author tries to explain it from a slightly different perspective and so if you have two different people explaining something to you then hopefully it'll make sense at least from one of those explanations and so the textbook chapter is indicated here along with you can see each of the homework assignment due dates so the due dates, I'm going to mention them in the announcement slides. And they're also posted on Blackboard. But then here's a third source of information of when the assignments are due. So there's really no excuse for something to, to slip your mind or slip through the cracks. You should print out this page and include it as the first piece of paper in that three ring binder that you're going to prepare for the course. Remember that um, I suggested you should include the lecture notes and the in-class exercise printed out in a three-ring binder. Well, here's something else that you should put as the first page because it'll really help you to keep organized if you occasionally glance at this and see what book chapter we're in, the subject of the lecture, what assignment we have. And the other way that this is useful is that when you're preparing for the test, if you know there's a certain topic that maybe you don't understand as well as others, you can go back to my YouTube channel and then re-watch the lecture, maybe just where I'm solving problems, or we're going to use Excel, Microsoft Excel, a lot this semester. So as you're preparing for the test, what you could do is you could find the, 
um, recording from when we were doing a certain Microsoft Excel procedure and then re-familiarize yourself with that. So the point is this is an important document and please print it out. Any questions so far about the syllabus or the schedule? Yeah, go ahead. Um, will you be posting lecture recordings to Blackboard or just your YouTube channel? They're both. Yeah, um, you may notice, I don't know if you can see the same thing as me, but uh, it is recording right now on Blackboard, and so it's going to be on Collaborate and YouTube. Other questions? All right. Um, let me show you the lecture notes that are posted already. It is in the folder that's called Lecture Notes. And you'll see that there's a lot of different options available to you. So if you want to have big printouts so that there's only two per, per page, here's that. If you want to have two slides per page or if you want to save paper and you want to have six slides per page, then you could print it out that way and maybe it gives you a little bit less room for your own handwriting, but you know, you save on paper. I give you some free space where you can write down the announcements. You know, the this uh, announcement slide is where you can copy in the, uh, the the information that's on the announcement slide that I'll show you. Okay, so the lecture notes are available. Here are the in-class exercises. So it's the in-class exercise papers that you should print out. And this is just a bunch of examples. You can see it's 65 pages. Every class meeting that we work, that, that we're together, there's going to be some example. I, I want you to get lots of practical experience. And so the homework assignment feels as familiar as it can. Now, occasionally, I'm going to throw a curveball at you in the homework, and that's intentional. You know, not every single problem you'll solve on the homework is going to be spoon-fed from a, an example in class. A lot of them will, but not every single one. But the point is, you should print out these so that you've got the appropriate space and the problem statement is already there in front of you and you don't have to write it down. It'll really save you a lot of trouble if you print out all these in-class exercises. These in-class exercises, um, this is probably, I think, maybe the 17th or 18th time that I've taught this course. And so these have evolved a lot over the years and uh, I feel pretty good about the way that this contributes to students learning. These are just some Excel files that we'll use for those in-class exercises in question. The other thing is you can see here's the homework assignments and so homework zero is available now. It says here it's due by 5 p.m. on Friday, worth up to 10 bonus homework points. And if you forget and don't submit it by 5 p.m., then please don't send me an email asking to submit it late. So it's a pretty easy assignment. I'm just asking you to tell me a little bit about yourself and think about what are your academic goals this semester and what you hope to accomplish and why do you think your major requires a class about money. You know, in, in this class, we've got electrical engineers, computer science students, civil engineers, uh, mechanical engineers. I'm not sure. I don't think the biomedical students take this class, although I could be wrong about that. But there's a lot of different majors. And so the question is, like, why are you learning about money? I ask you to, uh, to consider that when you submit the assignment. There's a question here. Would you like the homework on a Word document? Um, you can upload Word, that's fine, or you can uh, turn it into a PDF file. You know, you can print from Word and save it as a PDF. E either one of those would be okay. It's less good if you type directly into the assignment. I mean, that is a possibility. You know, like there's a, uh, a text tool within Blackboard, and then my least favorite would be if it was handwritten. I really don't like deciphering handwriting. so. Word or PDF would be great. Any other questions so far? All right, I'm really excited about this semester. Honestly, I love this class. Um, I'm glad that we have a big group of students. That makes things interesting. 
and uh, I got such favorable feedback from last semester students on the project. And some students just blew me away with the quality of the work that they did on the project. I don't know if you've talked to some people who've been through this class, but um, some people really did a great job forecasting the future. And the project, just to give you a sneak peek, is I ask you to consider your career and think about how much money you're going to make each year and what your expenses will be. And the point is to try and calculate by the time you retire, how much of a nest egg are you going to have? Like in other words, what are your assets going to be when you're ready to sail off into the sunset and move down to Belize and get that uh, fishing boat that you've always wanted or whatever your fantasy is? You know, it's probably going to take money. So the course project ha is kind of an exercise of looking at the financial side of the career that you're going to be embarking on. All right. Well, let's continue here. This is what the book looks like, by the way. You remember the ISBN is in the syllabus, and if you haven't ordered it already, please do. The lecture notes are on Blackboard. Oh, let me show you just really quickly how you can get to my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that on our course website, but it's just youtube.com C Isaac Wake. And so then you can find all the lecture recordings. And in fact, if you want to jump ahead, last semester's lecture recordings are there. Like, for example, you could see ENGR222 Class 2. And so we could find Class 2 from the fall. Well, we've got lots of different semesters here. If you know the subject, you can find it. So that's my YouTube channel. All right. When you upload the PDF file for your homework assignment to Blackboard, make sure that it has all of your pages. Once in a while, a student will tell me, oh, it, it's just the first page and I forgot to scan the rest, or maybe you know, I didn't get the app to work correctly. Just double check that the PDF actually has all of the pages that you intend it to. And then after you submit, it'll give you a confirmation message to make sure that it went through correctly. And so, you know, that's your responsibility. You've been at Marshall a couple of semesters so far. You know, it's on you to know how Blackboard works and how to submit assignments. And if, if you need assistance, the university provides technical help. Over at the library, you can get help from the IT services. They can show you how to upload assignments to Blackboard if you're not acquainted and can't figure it out. Uh, but just to reemphasize, late work's not accepted, um, so please don't ask. All right, so this course, what are we doing here? Talking about money. Such a diverse group of students. It's all about the Benjamins. So it's also about comparing alternatives. And what I mean by that is that in almost every project you're going to embark on during your engineering or computer science career, there's going to be multiple pieces of equipment or options that you could buy or different routes that your company could take. And so just as one illustration, if you're trying to smooth out asphalt, you could get a small steamroller or a big steamroller. And so how do you decide which of those is most economical? You know, it's more macho to have the big one, but uh, if you have this big steamroller, but you're just doing small residential roads, it may not be economically viable. So this semester, we're going to teach, I am going to teach you a couple of techniques you can use to identify how to maximize profit, minimize costs, and uh, select the most efficient solutions to problems. So alternatives can be physical things, like comparing two different pieces of equipment or two different servers. Those could be the alternatives that you're comparing. Sometimes, though, alternatives are economic options. And so what you're seeing here are two different cash flow diagrams. We'll get into cash flow diagrams and how to read them in a class or two. But just uh, really briefly, what this cash flow diagram on the left is saying is, you pay $8,000 now, and the interest rate that applies to you is 8.5%. So what if you had the option of paying $8,000 now, or the other option is to pay $4,500 two years in a row, 
in year three and year four. So people who don't know about the time value of money may think, well, 8,000 is less than two times 4,500. So the combined total number of dollars here is 9,000. But the time value of money means that money now is more valuable than money in the future. So it actually might be better to spend $9,000 if it's in the future compared to $8,000 today. What we have to do is we have to analyze, we have to compare apples to apples and take this future money and compare it to what its present value would be. So we can't compare these options until we put it in the same time frame. So that's kind of like another look at what we do in this course is we look at different options and we also look at how does time affect the value of money. Question here, would you recommend reading the book alongside the lecture or the lecture sufficient? Is the book interesting to read? Yes, I think that you should use both the book and the lectures together. Um, because uh, sometimes the textbook explains things in a different way or in more detail than we have time for in class. You know, we've only got 50 minutes together, and honestly, that's not enough time. I wish that we had 50 minutes every day instead of 50 minutes per week. And so, uh, Yusuf, I do think that you and everybody should get the book and read it, and I think it's really interesting. There's a lot of other books out there that I rejected, but we picked uh, the Blank and Tarquin book because it's pretty accessible and kind of uh, full of really good part practical applications. So we've been explaining like the essence of this course and why you take it. Because you're comparing alternatives, you're considering the time value of money. Another reason why this course is required is that ABET requires that students are prepared for careers in which they solve problems economically. In case you're not familiar, ABET, um, it stands for the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology. And it's the organization that certifies and accredits engineering and computer science programs. And here at Marshall, all of our College of Engineering and Computer Science um, degree programs are either ABET accredited or will be ABET accredited once they've been in existence long enough and have uh, that first review. So um, even the computer science and the safety technology programs, all of those are ABET accredited. And so we have to prepare you to think economically and to solve problems in an efficient way that uh, maximizes the value of the resources that your clients and your companies are gonna entrust to you. The way that I teach is we'll have like a little bit of PowerPoint and then we'll move over to the um, examples. Sometimes I'll kind of just illustrate calculations by bringing up a solved problem on the screen before I turn you loose on the in-class exercises. And uh, I think the in-class exercise is really where most of the learning occurs. And um, the intention there is that it's something you should be able to complete within the class time. Every once in a while, um, we may run out of time and you may not finish the entire in-class exercise, in which case I encourage you to just take a few moments later in the day and solve the rest of it. Uh, it sometimes is hand calculations and sometimes you're using Microsoft Excel. So if you don't yet have Excel installed on your computer, you can get it for free through the university. You know, the university subscribes to Office 365 and you can get it that way. Um, and it's okay if you work with your classmates or if you want to solve it individually. If you're more of a lone wolf, that's okay too. But they're usually pretty short and the uh, purpose is just to get you ready for the homework assignments. Now, even though I encourage collaboration on the in-class exercise, you should uh, complete the homework assignments individually. Now, uh, let's talk about interest. Interest being paid by a borrower, for example. So this little diagram that's shown on the screen here just kind of illustrates if you go to a bank because you're borrowing money, either for maybe your education or borrowing money to buy a car or to buy a house, um, you take a loan from the bank and they're giving you money now and you're repaying them in the future. 
And remember what I said earlier that money in the future isn't as valuable? A dollar next year isn't as valuable as a dollar now. And one of the main reasons why is because prices are always going up. And so if I give you a dollar next year, it's not going to be able to buy as many things as it can buy today. So that's why money in the future is less valuable, is because prices are constantly going up. So when you take a loan from the bank, they want their original money back and also a little bit more. That little bit more is interest. And so the interest that you're paying them is a manifestation of the time value of money. It's how you compensate them for the fact that the dollars you're paying back are less valuable, is you give them more dollars. Now, if you switch the perspective, in this first example, the little guy is the person who's taking the money and is paying back more to the big bank. We call that the interest rate. If you calculate the interest amount as a percentage of the principal, that's a rate. From the perspective of the investor, if you're loaning your money to a company, and most commonly the way that an individual investor loans money to a big corporation is by buying a bond. Maybe you've heard of bonds before. A bond is essentially when a company is trying to raise money and so they sell their debt to individual investors. So let's say that you buy a bond from Ford. You know, Ford is trying to raise some money and so they sell bonds, you buy one. What Ford is promising to do is pay you back your original principal plus a little extra. Well, that's the same idea as what we were talking about before. So you can calculate the rate of return as a percentage of the original payment amount, and that's rate of return. So the difference between interest rate and rate of return, it's gonna be the same formula, it's just a matter of perspective. It's The perspective is, are you the borrower or are you the investor? So some important terminology here. Interest is a manifestation of the time value of money. So by time value of money, what I'm talking about is that dollars in the future are less valuable than dollars today. So here's a picture of fuel prices back in 1960. So think for a minute there. Gas was $27 in 1960, right? No? It was 27 cents. So in those days, fuel was cheaper than it is now. So you've probably heard from your parents or your grandparents, you know, like how much a bottle of soda used to cost or how much a candy bar was in the good old days when fuel was cheaper back then. So things are always getting more expensive. Now there's exceptions to that. A handful of things are getting cheaper over time, most notably technology like computers and so on. But the broad trend is that most goods and services get continually more expensive. And so the manifestation of time value of money is the fact that if you're borrowing from someone, they want back more in the future. So interest is the amount. It's a fee that you would pay to use someone's money. Another way, a practical way to think about interest is the difference between what they gave you and how much you're paying back. So it's the extra amount. So interest is the amount owed after time, which is gonna be more minus principal, which is the original amount, the difference between the two. If you express it as a percentage of the principal, then that is interest rate. So here's the formula for interest rate. It's the interest amount per time unit, and one common time unit would be per year. And so it's almost a default assumption that our interest rates are expressed as a percent per year although there are exceptions. Sometimes we'll talk about the interest rate per period when there is compounding more frequently than an annual basis. Interest amount per principal times 100 to turn it into a percentage. Okay, rate of return, same formula. Interest amount divided by the original amount times 100. Remember the difference between interest rate and rate of return is perspective of whether you're the borrower or the lender. Okay, we're gonna try something new. I've never done this before. I don't know if it's gonna work, but just for a moment, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms 
And uh, just as a test, I'd like you to unmute yourself. If you haven't already, turn on your webcam and just say hi to your classmates. Just introduce yourselves for one or two minutes. And then I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to ask, did the breakout room thing work? Because I can't test this in advance until I've got students in the room. So this is my first time attempting these breakout rooms. Maybe your other instructors have done it before, but I've never done it. So let's see number of groups here. We're going to do 10 groups of four people each. All right. So I'm starting it now. I'll bring you back in just a minute. So the idea here is just introduce yourselves to the classmates, and then I'll bring you back. This may be helpful for solving problems if it works. interactive than it would be if we don't have those so especially for the in-class exercises all right so let me what you, let me show you what an in-class exercise looks like all right so here's the first one um, what I'm not sure about is whether you can see this in the breakout room uh, okay if not you may need to open up a second tab and uh, take a look at the in-class exercise within um, within Blackboard, because I'm going to put you back into breakout rooms in a second to work on this in-class exercise. So the one that we're going to look at is in-class exercise one. So it's just the first page. Maybe you haven't printed it yet, and that's OK. I want you to try solving these first three problems. So I'm going to put you in the breakout rooms, and you can talk through it together. These are pretty simple problems. The third one's a little tricky. First two are easy. Third one's more thought provoking. I'll put you in breakout rooms. Uh, it's going to be groups of three is what I'm going to aim for. And then I'll bring you back after six minutes, and we'll look at the solutions together. Hopefully, this breakout room thing will make it a little bit more interactive, where you actually get to talk to your classmates and work together and so on. All right, so I'm going to do that again. So um, again, if, if you don't see these problem statements in the breakout room, then just go to open another tab, because you'll have to open a second tab or maybe a second browser window to get at the in-class exercise problems. All right, we're doing it now. Now, unfortunately, it looks like when we do the breakout rooms, it stops the recording on uh, Blackboard. So, I mean, if I remember to start it again, there will be two recordings associated with this class on Blackboard. So maybe the YouTube recordings are going to be a little more seamless, but we'll figure it out. All right, so problem one. You borrow 20000 they charge 5%. How do you find out the amount that's due in one year? That okay, question, do you have to turn this in? No, this is strictly for you. This is for your benefit. And so what you ought to do is print it out and then you know if you keep it, then you've got an example of some similar problem when you solve the homework assignment. All right, so it's going to be 21,000 because the interest is 5% of the principal, which is 1,000. So the amount owed after the year is 21,000 because it's the principal and the interest. Okay, the second problem, what rate of return do you earn if uh, you invest 200,000 and they pay you back 212? So what that means is that the interest amount was 12,000 because that's the payback amount minus the principal gives you the interest amount of 12,000. And that is a percentage of the principal, so 12,000 divided by the original amount, 200,000, that means that you've earned 6% rate of return. OK, now problem three was a little bit of a stretch, and I know that it was. It's OK. Let me show you how this one works out. First of all, ISK is Icelandic krona. 
That's the currency that they use in the nation of Iceland. So let's say he has 55,123.45 Icelandic krona and the account earns 3%. What's the value of that account a year ago in United Arab Emirates dirham if the exchange rate is 35.25? So this is a complex one. The first thing to do is find out the value today in dirhams. So the value that the 55,123 Convert that from krona to dirham, and it's 1,564 approximately dirham. And then the way that you find out how much it was a year ago, you may be tempted to just multiply it by um, 0.97, but that would give you a slightly wrong result. The amount now is the initial amount plus 3% of the initial amount, because this is, you know, you can think of today as the future. So what was that question? Okay. I, well, it's 12.50. We're out of time. Um, we're going to pick back up just kind of revisiting this example when we get together in class on Friday. Let me just remind you of what you should be doing. Remember, get that three ring binder, print out the notes, print out the in-class exercise, order the textbook, and start on homework zero. All right. Good first day, everybody. Thank you for your participation. This is going to be a great semester. I'm excited. I will see you on Friday afternoon. Feel free to send me an email or give me a call on Teams if you have any questions. Bye-bye.